Hey everyone, my name is Forrest. I'm Emily. <laughs> <laughs> and this is our uh, Toyota motorhome. It's a 1989 Slumber Queen that we just recently renovated and we've turned it into our tiny house on wheels. We've been living in it almost a month now, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, come check it out. A lot of it is like a traditional RV, um, but we have done some modifications so that we can boondock a little bit more. So our motorhome is 21 feet long, and which is actually very similar to a Sprinter van size, but what we have is it's already sort of like built out when we got it, and then we've just renovated it. So coming in here, we sort of have our kitchen. Uh, right here we have our fridge, and then just like a snack bin, some snacks and you know some fruits and veg and things. Uh, this just rolls out lifts up and we have all our all of, all of our fridge stuff in here and this is a chili mousse 52 liter and they were kind enough to send us that yeah it works great it, it works a lot better than the fridge that was in here which was uh you know took 10 amps and it was like only worked on propane so we have our four burner stove and oven here uh this is just so it doesn't rattle we've been baking pies in here nachos you know just simple things We've actually been making some unbelievable meals on here. Like the best food I've ever made has been on this stove. I don't know what it is about it, but it's magical. This is a bit of a charging station. I wired that in. It's got uh, two 3.0 USBs with Qualcomm quick charging. And then this is a um, 12 volt plug. And this is our 110 volt plug that actually all runs down to our inverter, which is tucked away. We did this backsplash here. This is all custom work. It's just like a stick on backsplash and it works great. Looks good with our aesthetic, everything like that. Some spice manganese. Coming back here, I guess we've got sort of our one chill session spot here. Ronnie's uh, relaxing to the max after being outside. We reupholstered our cushions so that they sort of go with our curtains, which are right here. They roll up and down, cover our windows and they block out any lights. These cabinets were all in here. We just kind of sanded them and painted them. Uh, this is all our food. <laughs> we use a lot of like bulk foods, but we, when we empty out a jar, then we just go and buy more and fill up that same jar. So we don't have a bunch of extra food everywhere. This is my clothes cupboard and my camera gear cupboard, which is half empty because we're using a lot of the camera gear right now. I'm gonna show you guys quickly my electrical system is all under here it's not the easiest to get to but because everything's been done correctly we don't really need to get to it very often so what we have here visible is two lithium batteries these are from Relyon. was lucky enough to partner with them and they sent us these so we were able to replace our lead acid batteries there's a third one that you can't see so we have 300 amp hours of usable electricity when we're fully charged uh, yeah, lithium is awesome to have because lead acid you can only use about 50% before you start degrading the cells and uh, lithium is just a massive upgrade. So huge thanks to rely on for that. We have all of our solar coming in through um, the outside through this thing here and then it runs up with uh, all these other wires into this box under here and into our 60 amp MPPT charge controller which was provided to us from Renogy. So huge thanks to them. And they also put 300 extra watts of solar on the roof. So that's awesome too. I installed an isolator as well. So that wasn't in here before. We had to do a lot of stuff to be able to, like I say, boondock because these RVs are really just built to go from RV park to RV park. And you have to sort of upgrade them if you want to do any sort of boondocking at all. So we put an isolator in, which, um, is a smart isolator and every time that you turn the car on it'll charge the starter battery and once your starter battery hits a certain voltage it then directs your power to your auxiliary batteries which we definitely need because the solar is not enough in the winter what we have here is a cabinet that we built we had to design something so that we'd be able to bring our instant pot with us 
and uh, I decided to put in this cabinet, which takes up a lot of seating area, but we had to so that we could get our appliances. We've got uh, sliding doors so that you don't have to flip anything into our table space or our living space. We've got our Vitamix, our Instant Pot, a couple other things, and then our inverters under there with some switches on the side to turn the inverter on and off. And we also got switches for our copper LED strings here too. On the other side the we other have um, <laughs> <laughs> stuff falling out of course. Uh, Emily's got one half border of this cabinet and I've got another quarter and that's just all for my podcasting stuff in there. So this is Ronnie's smart feeder. This thing has a, a timed feeder um, which just to kind of allows a certain amount of food to come out at, at the proper times. And that thing is honestly the best purchase that we've ever made <laughs> um, because Ronnie's very food obsessed and that just kind of keeps him uh, away from us when it's dinner time. He just yells at the feeder instead of at us. Uh, this is our really crappy traditional RV table that is broken. This, this post here is broken. We thought it was got to replace that. This is just a temporary spot here. sort of slides in and out and wobbles like crazy. <laughs> so whoever has the heaviest bowl has to hold yeah. it. <laughs> we got this for extra seating just because not everybody wants to like scrunch up in there together. <laughs> um, and then we also try to use the bottom as like extra blanket storage. So we just shoved them in there. Underneath is our wine cellar as well as our extended library and a bag <laughs> and that all just goes on with magnets we built this with the intention of ronnie having his own space but like most cats they don't care about anything you spend money on them for so <laughs> this has kind of become like extra little storage we will like pop this down and put things there sometimes but then these um hold all our like charge cables and things that we want handy so that we don't have to keep like digging things out and it keeps them tucked away with our map, we're putting these little like color-coded stickers on there to map out like towns that either have good free camping, good campgrounds, and then places we want to go. So like all the national parks that are a must go are on there so that we can visually see like where we need to map our trip out. We have this back storage, which we haven't really figured out what to do with because it's open. So if you have too much stuff in there, it's pretty cluttered. Um, we might maybe try to stick some plants or something up there, but for right now it's kind of wasted space. And then here, this is my clothing. I have two. Um, <laughs> I have like all my pants and stuff, and then like some bins in there to help organize. I was surprised I fit everything. And then here is our dish cupboard and like extra dish towels. Um, one thing we thought was dope was we found these bamboo dishes so that we don't have to worry about glass like falling. We did break a bamboo plate though, so <laughs> I don't know how well that's working out. Um, yeah, and then we don't really use our bathroom sink, so we have our toothbrushes out here and then like face wash and stuff. And then this is our dish soap and we hung up this rack just to save counter space because we really didn't have it. It does like come down so the wall is completely empty. What we do for water is we have a filter that we plug into our hose when we fill up and then we don't drink straight out of the tap. We use a like double filter system so this is just like a, um, one you can buy at Walmart and then we've added like mineral um, stones that remineralize it which is nice because then our water isn't gross or we're worried about drinking it it like makes it pretty clean under here it's a little messy this is where we stick our water, water jug usually but we have like cleaning supplies our potatoes compost <laughs> extra dishes so this is our thermostat that we have for our um, propane furnace it's pretty nice because you can get it up to 90 in here and it stays pretty warm and then we have our closet here which is a bit of a mess we added a little chalkboard because we we're like hey Let's save on having paper all over the place for notes, so that works. Um, this is our bathroom. This is like Ronnie's bathroom as well, but also where we just put stuff we don't necessarily have a place for. So um, as you can see, it's kind of like our storage because it is a wet bath. So if we do want to use it, we have to pull everything out, but we just opt for using public showers versus transferring everything in and out and then using up our water supply. And Ronnie's litter's down here. So the stool, we ha made it so that it can sit over his litter, but then we can still like, use the washroom as if there's a floor there, and then it all 
folds back up. This is Ronnie's cat door. He hasn't quite figured out how to use it because he's never had one before, but we're working on it. <laughs> it's one of those things we're training him on. We're gonna have to bribe him with treats. This is our bed. We do have to replace our mattress. That's like one thing in here. And then other than that, like this is a really nice sleeping area. We put reflectic um, foam underneath to help with moisture because that was something we found was using like a foam mattress on a solid surface it was getting collecting moisture underneath as well as like along the walls we put reflectix because it was getting the mattress damp um so that kind of sucked because that then creates mold which you don't really want in your bed so one other thing that we have here is uh, a little stoop that we made for ronnie and this is actually where he likes to sit the most um we built it so that he'd be able to get up and down the bed without having to make this big leap every time but he ends up chilling there a lot and then chilling on top of the fridge. Those are like his two favorite spots. Um, this is our access to the front cab. We just have like a temporary blanket over it. We, we built this dividing curtain and it doesn't really work. We're gonna maybe make something else. Um, but yeah, it's just like a traditional little Toyota truck in the front, which is super fun. This is our sort of security system and backup camera. So we turn that on um, and then we can see behind us. And then it also has, we have some hidden security cameras so that we can remain safe as well. We have to really utilize like all our storage. So behind my seat or the driver's seat, it's not necessarily mine, but I'm the only one that drives right now. Uh, we have our laundry and all that kind of stuff. So one other thing that we did was we put in a smoke alarm and a carbon monoxide detector. These are two very important things in such a small space, especially when you have propane that you're using. RVs usually have some outside compartments. We just have a couple on this one because it's a smaller motorhome. Uh, this is our propane. We have two 20 pound tanks. We do have an awning. We haven't tried to use it yet. This uh, cool little cargo box that I installed right onto the, the metal bumper here. And we've got our water hose in here. These are our wetsuits, um, some tools, some antifreeze, skateboard some leveling blocks and a little jerry can that's pretty much the extent of that so far i plan on getting some personal electric vehicles one of these days and then uh putting those in there so that we can kind of just go around this is an atwood water heater and these are kind of old school what it does is you light that with a barbecue lighter and it just shoots out a propane flame into this tube and then heats up a uh, uh a couple gallon tank i'm not sure how big it is actually this is our water fill up station. Very traditional for RVs. This is if you're hooked up and you just want the pressure of the hose to actually run your system. And this is for any water that you fill with your fresh water tank up and then we have a pump inside that, that sort of acts as a water system with pressure and all that. And then right here we have a traditional um, waste line here. This is our for our black tank and our gray tank and there's two different valves you pull. You hook up a slinky that's uh, in the back bumper so that we can get rid of our waste. A Toyota um, RV is something that I've wanted for a really long time because these just have really, really basic engines that are very reliable, can go a long time, and they're for, like this one's a four cylinder, so we get pretty good gas mileage. It is a little gutless, but um, this is a Toyota 22RE, the fuel injected version, because it's an 89. Um, and then under here, we've got our isolator. This is called a battery doctor. This is the version and it connects right to our starter battery. And then this line goes all the way back to our auxiliary battery. So this right here is our shore power hookup. It's just 15 amps and it has a battery charger um, that charges our auxiliary batteries as well. And so we actually have three different ways to generate electricity, which is extremely important where we live in the Pacific Northwest because solar is not enough. Um, so you have that combination of these three different ways to charge our batteries and uh, then you're never really too worried about that. We've lived in a van before together. I think the longest time we lived together was like four months in a van, but it was not nearly as well set up as this. So through that experience, we kind of learned what we needed, sort of our, com our personal comfort levels, because you know everybody's different, everybody needs certain things. We didn't have a kitchen, which really bummed me out because I love to cook. Our bed was pretty crap. I mean, the van we had was just really not well set up. So we wanted to do this again because we weren't able to live long term in our van 
and you get a lot more benefits out of living this sort of lifestyle in the long term. Also, we wanted to do this trip. We wanted to kind of do a vacationing trip for a couple months, um, looping down into the United States and then up into Ontario and over to the east coast of Canada and the States as well. My experience in the motorhome so far has been a bit turbulent. <laughs> I'm having a really hard time with sleeping just because our bed is so uncomfortable um, and I feel like an 80 year old woman now but other than that like it's been pretty good we have a lot of fun like cooking and it's really nice just like hanging out in here and when it is nice out and it's not raining we just get outside whereas like in our apartment it didn't really matter what the weather was we stayed pretty confined in our apartment it's been okay it's definitely going to improve like once we work out some kinks also just finding a routine like every morning i have to like like i get up and i have my supplements and like have a few things that i do in like a morning routine especially and it's been really hard to figure out how to do that in here because i don't want like all my supplements cluttering up the space and like like things that are in my morning routine just being out in the way so it's like I have felt really off because of that I haven't gotten in a good flow. We moved into the motorhome January 1st which is like the worst time you could try to do this in Canada. It's not the worst place in Canada to be in a motorhome it's probably one of the better places but we do face a, a really specific set of challenges and one of those is not only the cold but also the dampness um, so we've remedy that in in different ways like right behind us we have film on the windows which adds insulation and then it also cuts down on the um, the surface area where condensation can happen so the condensation is sort of localized on the metal as opposed to all over the window um, so that's helped a lot but there's just sort of a lot of things a lot of challenges that we've had to kind of figure out really rapidly I've been sort of making videos about alternative dwellings for a while and talking to a lot of people and we've done van life before so we thought we were sort of prepared for for what we were getting into but you know our batteries died we don't have a proper battery monitor which is one of the next upgrades I'm going to do uh, which means no heat because our propane furnace had, runs a fan and it won't even ignite without electricity which means our fridge isn't going to work so like we had a bunch of hiccups uh, really early on yeah our mattress sucks so it's hard to sleep uh, sometimes it's noisy sometimes it's rainy and and windy we're sleeping places that might not necessarily feel so safe uh, or so sure that we're even allowed to be there um, and I think that has been the biggest challenge for me and, and Emily mentioned it too which was just a, a lack of sleep you can make this as comfortable as it can be but it's not necessarily ever going to be as comfortable as a house could be um, you have to stow things away you have to think twice about different things that you would never even think once about like where your electricity comes in you just plug right into the wall you have to manage your electricity in here in specific ways your fuel you have to go fill up propane you know you have to do all these little things that you wouldn't do in a normal house but there are a lot of benefits to it as well and the main one for me is not paying rent and being able to save money and build a future but also it's never boring when i lived in an apartment i was bored a lot which leads to stagnation in here you're too busy to be bored <laughs> trying to deal with all your problems <laughs> um, but but yeah it's it's been um turbulent or it's been like a roller coaster of ups and downs and and when you know you have difficult times you, your good times are uh you appreciate them much much more um and then we're, we're sort of leveling that stuff out we are figuring those things out and, and doing the necessary steps buying the necessary things um, to figure out what we what we need to be to ha to reach the comfort level that we want in here. When we when we got the motor home, it was stuck in the '80s. <laughs> Definitely, it had like a veneer, fake wood everywhere. I mean, you could live in it, um, but not to the comfort levels that we're striving for in here. We just really wanted to make it somewhere where we love being in, instead of just something that we're sort of jumping into like we had a couple months we decided to you know prolong when we were going to move into this so that we could get it to a state where we believed it would be suitable for us advice that i would have for somebody is i guess my advice is sort of paradoxical it's it's take your time and and be slow and methodical and do your research and 
and try to like figure out what you need before you move into a van but then also you have to take that leap eventually so my advice is to go slow but do it also don't just put it off and think that you have to fit your house in here because that's not going to happen you have to create a house out of this um, which just means implementing things a little bit differently than you would in a house so take your time do your research but then once you're actually moved into this space you're going to find out that a lot of things that you've done you might not actually need um, which means making things sort of impermanent to begin with um, so that you can sort of cement down what you actually need so we brought in a ton of stuff in here that we have since taken to our storage unit once you're actually doing it you're really going to figure out what you do need and what you don't need so it's it's hard to plan everything until you're actually living in here the key is to just be organized and have a system the biggest thing you can do in a space like this is have a spot for everything as annoying and tedious as it is you have to put things back where they belong otherwise you're just going to get bogged down by a mess and like overwhelmed by like, not knowing what to do with your stuff which can also really affect your mood especially if you're in a small space some ideals of minimalism have always been interesting to me i'm not a very sentimental person i literally don't have a sentimental object i don't consider myself a minimalist at all i definitely don't have a ton of stuff but i do have some things that are unnecessary that uh, only serve like one purpose once a month i'm striving for a balance i guess between minimalism and then also not limiting myself like not being like oh this is sentimental to me but I'll never I don't need it you know what I mean because I have my own reasons to keep like the sentimental things that I do have which I really enjoy having around and here I've found like things that I, I guess I thought were sentimental I realized that I didn't really need so I'm trying to be more minimal in here and I really like that this is inspiring me to just get rid of things that I don't actually need. I would definitely recommend an alternative lifestyle like this um, to the right person. I think people that want to be able to save some money should definitely think about doing this. Our whole living expenses uh, is less than just the rent we were paying. I just think that somebody that's doing this has to kind of um, figure out what sort of comfort level they need. And, and just evaluate if, if this is even possible for them. I think I would recommend this as much as I've been having a bit of a struggle with it. The way that I help my mental health is being outside and just like being amongst the trees or like the ocean, like that alone, just having the accessibility to parking at a beach all day and being outside all day has like, is a really positive thing and really helpful in my life. So like if you're a person like that or somebody that just doesn't want to feel bogged down, I guess, by, you know, this like standard box of living that you're supposed to be put into, I think it's really good and it gives you a lot of freedom. We make our money while living in here. Well, I make my money a little bit less traditionally than Emily does, but I work remotely. I own a business and, um, I own this YouTube channel that this is on, so I make my money through AdSense, through sponsorship, through different means, through through making content and making videos and making movies. This lifestyle sort of is conducive with that. There are some setbacks, like not having really good internet, uh, not having uh, tons of power, and having to generate our own power to be able to run a computer and stuff. I work at a cafe, and then I also do house cleaning part-time, which it's like it's great while we're in here because I can save um, all of that money, but it, it will it stop will. once we start traveling. So I've definitely learned as far as work goes, like who to mention it to and who not to, because I know that, you know, certain people I clean for might be kind of like judgmental or start wondering how reliable I am if I'm doing something like this. There's a lot of challenges that we face as a couple that people don't face if they're just solo. Um, one of those is commuting to work. If, if two people are working and they're having to drive and drop each other off and stuff, that's one thing. Just limited amount of space. Nowhere to really go in a separate room to be away from each other if we need to. One of us has to like leave or go up into the bedroom and then it's sort of like we're still in this space. But we make it work for the most part. <laughs> yeah, living in a space like this, if there's any sort of problems, they come up more immediately. Like even the fact that if there's a mess, it's much more evident that, that, that there is a mess. People say, oh, but it's much quicker because you're in a smaller space. And it, and it is, but you're also having to clean 
in ways that aren't as efficient. Like our vacuum really sucks and not in a good way. Uh, it's really small and crappy. So when we vacuum, it takes 20 minutes to do a rug. Whereas with a real vacuum, it would take two, two minutes. And that also goes with sort of uh, emotions, human emotions, where if there's something that arises, it's like, okay, we have to deal with this. Uh, we can't, you know, just pretend that we're not feeling a certain way and just watch TV or something like that. Living with a cat, I think is really nice. So we have a little fur ball to cuddle and he likes to play outside so that's really fun. It is like having another person in here basically because like you literally have to have like a separate bathroom, a separate little eating area. Like yeah. it takes up way more space than it would if it was just you but I think it's worth it because he really enjoys it and like he gets outside walking and we'll take him out for a walk and I think just like he gets so happy when he's outside running around in the bush and like it makes me happy in return so it's been really nice living with a cat. I think we are exceptionally lucky though because he's never been a cat to like pee or go to the bathroom anywhere like mm -hmm. he's extremely patient like if we go to bed and forget to set up his litter again he'll wait until we're up so it's like I mean Definitely not every situation is going to be great, but yeah, we're, I think we're exceptionally lucky with our cat. I love this space because everything sort of has its own function and a lot of things have multifunctions. Like this space that we're in right now um, also doubles as a podcast studio. You know, it also turns into a bed, so it has like three different functions. For the past month, we've been living around Victoria and there's a big van life community here. So we've been able to kind of communicate with people that are already living in vans and we've figured out kind of where they park. And then we've also found our own places and we use iOverlander, which is a great app for finding places to park. That's been pretty easy actually. So having a bathroom was pretty essential for us and a lot has already been done with with this RV because of you know the factory that built it out and it has a traditional RV toilet with a black tank and it has a gray tank as well so we just go to sandy dump stations our fresh water lasts about as long as our gray water takes to fill up for showers we have an anytime fitness membership um, 24 hour gyms we can just go in whenever we want and shower and work out if we feel like it it's my personal philosophy is just be kind to one another and um, also just like don't think you can't do what you want to do in life like that's why we're doing this like you can literally do anything you want of course there's circumstances but if you really care enough or want to you can find a way to make something work like something I've always kind of believed in and I'm not willing to compromise like living a mundane life for the fact that we can do this and have so much freedom. My personal philosophy on life is that The Matrix is a documentary. <laughs> it's just always changing, but I would just say that um, do what you actually want to do as much as you can. Uh, and especially for work, I think work is one thing that we have um, the privilege to choose to a degree what we decide on doing and what we decide on pursuing um, everything is profitable you can profit off creativity you don't have to settle for a job you don't like um, make it work and work hard and do what you actually want to do in life um, because otherwise why what is the point just do what makes you happy and fulfilled and that's what I'm trying to do <laughs> If you guys want to follow us and find out more about us, um, we actually have a YouTube channel in the description below where we made a detailed series about everything that we did in this motorhome to make it look how it looks now. And we also do some travel vlogs, some podcasting, some other things like that. And then I've got an Instagram, which is Forrest the Filmmaker. Um, and you can stay up to date with the behind the scenes of what's going on in this channel and what's going on in the other one. And Emily's got an Instagram, but she doesn't want to talk about it. It's E-M-Y-L-E-H in the description below as well. <laughs> Thanks guys for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Hey.